If you're salty in your food and you suffer from autoimmune disease, especially rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, or Crohn's disease, you may be pouring gas on your autoimmune fire. If you are looking at your food as a potential trigger to your autoimmune disease, salt may be the thing you're overlooking that could be the biggest benefit for you if you cut it out. Let's dive into the science behind this today. I'm Dr. John Bartimus, and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at Optimal. The average American consumes 12 grams per day of salt or sodium chloride. That's two times more than we should be taking in. A high salt environment or a high salt intake promotes inflammation and inflammation promotes disease. So if you're consuming a high salt diet or you already have autoimmune disease and you're adding salt to anything you're eating, the potential is there that you are flaring your disease especially if you have a TH17 dominant autoimmune disease, such as multiple sclerosis, Crohn's disease, or rheumatoid arthritis. Those three, if you're suffering with one of them, pay particular attention to this video, but this could impact any and all autoimmune disease because the TH17 cells of the immune system are the cells known to drive or promote the tissue damage in whatever autoimmune disease it is that you're suffering from. So let's learn about these. Now, today's gonna to be a little bit nuts and bolts on immune system physiology, but we're doing it because you'll better understand why you should avoid the salt. So when your immune system is developing or creating new cells, along the T cell line, you start with a baby, right? In all life forms, there's a baby that then matures into some adult. The same is true for your immune system cells. They're part of you and your life form, okay? So let's start with a baby T cell, or called a naive T cell, or a TH0 cell. Now this is a baby, and babies have, all they have is potential ahead of them. They could become anything, right? With the right nurturing and parenting, they could become a great adult, or with the wrong environment, they could become a poor adult and a poor member of society. So this, this, this naive T cell has nothing but the best future ahead of him if he matures or she in a low salt environment or a adequate salt environment. But if this cell matures in a high salt environment, the potential is there that it could become a cell that promotes autoimmune disease. How does that happen? Well, this cell is going to mature based on the signals it's receiving in the environment. Okay, those signals can be nutrients like salt and carbs and proteins and fats. Those signals could be inflammatory markers called cytokines that other cells in its environment are putting out. So let's take this cell and add salt to it. And salt is sodium chloride, right? NaCl. That could be the normal table salt that you see at a restaurant diner, or it could be pink Himalayan sea salt that was blessed by a shaman. Either way, it's all sodium chloride, it's all the same. The pink Himalayan stuff isn't better than the table salt stuff. It all can, has the potential to flare you just as badly if you have autoimmune disease. So if we take this cell and we add a high salt environment to it, then that high salt environment is going to promote a TH17 environment. And remember, the TH17 cells are the cells that we don't want to have inappropriately high amounts of because those cells can promote tissue damage and flare your autoimmune disease process, thereby impacting your quality of life in a negative way. So that's one way it could go. If we mature the cell in just an adequate salt environment, then that cell may become a T-regulatory cell. And a T-regulatory cell is the kind of cell you want. The T-regulatory cell is the conductor of the orchestra. It's going to tell certain instruments to play when they should and keep these ones quiet and vice versa. So T-regulatory cells promote tolerance or shh, let's not be too inflamed. 
Let's only shoot at bad guys, not shoot at ourselves. Okay. So when you have a naive T cell maturing in a healthy environment with not too many inflammatory signals, not high salt, not a poor diet and other things that can contribute, to bad things, then that cell will become a good cell, a T regulatory cell, and promote an anti-inflammatory environment, an anti-autoimmune environment, etc. But if we go back to the high salt environment, because we're consuming processed foods, we're adding salt to our diet, we're eating lots of fried stuff, we're eating lots of fast food, those are high salt foods, that's a high salt environment, then what that does is the salt is sensed by that cell, by that naive T cell. And inside that cell, a lot of things happen, but there's a, a, a molecule in there called SGK1, which stands for serum glucocorticoid kinase 1. You may or may not want to remember that. And what that results in is upregulation on that cell of a receptor called interleukin-23 receptor. And the reason that's important is because interleukin-23 is a cytokine that promotes maturity into the Th17 phenotype or the Th17 cell. And when you add interleukin-23 to the inflammation created by interleukin-6, which is also present in a high salt environment, you're now creating those Th17 cells. And those Th17 cells have been shown in the research to be the prime drivers behind autoimmunity, specifically Crohn's, MS, and RA. So we don't want to salt our way to a faster death or a poorer quality of life. We want to eat only the salt that nature is providing us that's already inherently in that food. And this has been shown in the research to be true. Researchers have taken people with autoimmune disease that were eating 12 grams per day of salt and they cut their diets down to either 9 grams per day or 6 grams per day. And the group that consumed 6 grams per day, the least amount of salt per day, showed the greatest reductions in interleukin-6, in interleukin-23, in the activity of pathogenic Th17 cells and had the least amount of flares. So that goes to show that if you're someone with autoimmune disease and you're really in tune with the foods you're eating and foods that could be triggers for you, one that you may be overlooking is salt, and salt has been shown to be a proven trigger in autoimmune disease. One other thing I want to touch on, what if you have autoimmune disease and you have low blood pressure? Many people with low blood pressure are told, well, consume salt because that will raise your blood pressure and you won't be as dizzy or lightheaded, etc. Well, if you have autoimmune disease and low blood pressure, salting your blood pressure up to normal is not the strategy you want because of this mechanism. So you need to look for other mechanisms to raise your blood pressure without increasing your salt intake, and licorice is an option there. Of course, you don't want to just take this video and use licorice. You want to take this information and consult with your managing clinician and determine if that's right for your case and your puzzle. But I hope this nugget is useful to you. If you have autoimmune disease, do not add salt and do not eat that processed high salt fast food that is ubiquitous in our society. If you're averaging that 12 grams per day, try and cut that down to six or as minimal as possible, ideally cutting it down to just the sodium that is naturally in the fruits, veggies, lean meats, nuts, and seeds that you're eating every day as an ancestral type diet. And if you need help with this, then you should partner with a detective clinician who can look at your whole case and determine whether this is a factor in it or not. I'm Dr. John Bartimus and I work with people every day on things like this. If you'd like to work with me, reach out at www.functionalmedicinecharlotte.com.